Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to track um, to track one again. This is the second um, talk for today, and um, we'll be having Joseph Kayla, who is the CTO of Friendly Automate, a Swiss software as a service open startup. Joseph is a system administrator and is also a coder and a teacher. So today, Joseph will be taking us through the topic, tracking email in, in a multi-domain environment. Welcome, Joseph. Hello, Toby. Hello, everyone. Great to be here. So yeah, I, OK, cool. Um, so we're going to talk about Modic in a multi-domain environment so, in general. Joseph? Yeah. Sorry before you go on. Can you please bring it over your mouse down? Are you using Google Slide? OK, no, no problem. It's fine. Continue, please. Do you see my screen fine? Yes. OK. Yeah, I can't make it more. Wait. How is this? Same? OK. OK, perfect. So we're going to talk about Mark in a multi-domain environment. Um, today and that's going to be including uh, not just emails, but it will be. Uh, I will talk about tracking in general and anything which is related to a modic setup where you would have a multi-domain environment. And this is a very popular issue today. I see that uh, Nick, the previous speaker, was also touching the the first party, third party cookies, and after me, Eki will speak probably about the same thing. So I will just barely touch it. I will more focus on, as usual, emailing um, in this today's presentation. And you will have something to go on with at the end. I promise you that. So um, why, why multi-domain uh, environment and what is that? If you use Moric just like uh, in one domain, which means you have one website, you are tracking that, and you use Moric, uh, with that website to track all the information, you probably will not face these challenges. But there are many questions also in the forums, and also we we uh, see these questions uh, by Friendly Automate from our clients. What happens if I have multiple websites? So let's a little bit look at the scenarios. What is a multi multi domain uh, environment? So there can be cases when you are sharing uh, data ownership between. Uh, your website. So you have one website, one website which is focusing, let's say, on dogs, and you have another one which is focusing on cats. And you are sharing data ownership on both sides. You're the same owner of the data, but it's a different website with a different domain. And then you might find some challenges. This is this 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 solutions and challenges I, I will talk about today will be concerning this scenario. Or you are tracking multiple domains for any reason, or or you have uh, a, a setup where you have you have to have multiple domains because you're working on different languages. So you have a .com, you have a .da or .co.uk domain. But this is not about the multi-tenant Mauric setup. If you don't know what is that, you're probably not a provider yourself. Multi-tenant is when you have one Mauric and you have like five companies inside and all these five companies uh, are separate entities. So I'm not gonna talk about these kind of things. So. Again, why would you have such a setup, multi-domain setup? Like I said, you have a blog and you have a shop. We have clients who have a blog, whatever, blog.com, and then they have a website as well, which would be uh, whatever company shop.com. And there is a different domain. So if you are trying to track the, let's say you install your Modic on one of these domains as modic.website.com, you will be not able to track the shop unless it's a subdomain. But when you browse the internet, you will find a lot of solutions like this that it's a complete different domain name will have the shop and the different one will have the blog. Or you have multiple stores. For example, you are selling electronics, you're selling cosmetics, you're selling cat food or toys, whatever, under a different domain, but you would like to keep your customer base, your contacts, you would like to keep in one place. So then you also have multi-domain tracking. Like I said before, you can have different, you operating in different countries. Again, you have multiple domains. You have maybe a .com, you have a .org, you have a UK. Those are actually multiple domains. It doesn't matter if it's all Amazon, it will be different websites with different cookies uh, 
in terms of first party and third party. Or you just use Modic for uh, multiple email list operation, which means you have a bunch of landing pages and you are communicating with your uh, contacts uh, di in different segments. And the different segment belongs to different landing page. So you, you will have a problem tracking those different landing pages if they are on multiple domains. But in general, the other problem is that if you have different email addresses, for example, you have domain1.com, and then you send it out from your Modic, which is installed on your Modic domain.com, then domain1.com will have reputation consequences in the eyes of the spam filters or ESPs. And I will talk about that, and we have something for you that will help uh, to, to overcome that issue with the reputation as well. So these are the major scenarios when you when you would use a multi-domain environment. And I understand this is not for everyone, but if you are working in such an environment and if you have your Modic installed in a different domain than your main website, then you will have problem with your cookies. Um, there are many challenges if you work in a multi-domain environment. Uh, one of the challenges is a legal challenge. So. I'm not going to talk about GDPR uh, again. Uh, I think that uh, we talked about it uh, enough. But there is one thing you have to do. You have to specify how you store and what data you store from your customers, from your contacts. That's very important. So if you are storing data on your domain one website, you're storing data for 10 other domains, it's OK if you do the tracking, but you should disclose it. And that's the most important thing in the GDPR that you're letting them know how you will uh, use that data. So from the multi-domain point of view, it's okay, just communicate it. And be clear about the tracking. What are you uh, tracking? Ask for the permission. And if you have unsubscribe requests or you have data dis disclosure requests showing what kind of data you're collecting, you have to make sure that you're doing it. Of course, Monik is helping you with that. And in a moment, I will show you how, um, how we do it uh, in case of multi-domain environments. Now, the other topic is the data ownership. Um, regarding data ownership, um, if you have multiple websites, let's say you have a, a toy store, electronic store, cosmetic store, you can create a multi-choice um, multi um, custom field where you are storing the data based on previous visits. And you can set up a background campaign for that. If someone was visiting my toy store URL, then add this visit tracking to this certain uh, uh, contact. And this way you can always keep, keep in track if you have multiple domains on which domain the people were actually visiting. The other way is if you have like an either or relationship, so you don't, uh, one contact can belong only to one provider. In that case, you can simply uh, store it as a contact owner. And this has other uh, advantages as well, which I will talk about later. I think the best way to store data is to assign it to a contact owner, but sometimes you can't do it. That's why you might have to do a multi-choice um, multi field. So let's talk about a little bit about the tracking and first party cookies, but I will really just uh, give you an overview because I know that others will talk about it today as well in details. Um, so for example, this website, joycare.com would be able to manage the first party cookies from, from this domain, which means I'm fine with m.joycare.com. But if I install my all my modics.com, um, and I have my Mautic there, and I would like to track like 10 websites, then I would run into issues with the cross-domain tracking because all my Mautics.com is not the same as joeykeller.com. That simple is it. So we have to make sure that we somehow going around that. <clears throat> and the same thing happens um, with the domain reputation. So if you are sending out emails, and I would like to talk a little bit more about the email part because it's closer to my heart anyway. Um, the emails, if you are sending out an email from your Mautic domain 
with another email domain, which means from our allmymautics.com, I would send out an email as hello at joykeller.com. Then I would have a mixed domain case in my um, in my uh, email uh, fingerprint. That means that if I open the email as a source, I would see a bunch of other domains in there. They call tracking domains. And that's where my Mautic is installed in. And <clears throat> if I have multiple emails, uh, email domains being sent out, what would actually happen is that all of them would have an effect on my Mautic domain and on each other as well. <clears throat> because spam filters are not stupid. They know exactly that if there are mixed domains, then they have some kind of relationship. And we we noticed that in the, in the past that even if, and actually you can try it if you want, uh, if you have a blacklisted domain and you have a Mautic on it, and you would send out an email from that Mautic, even if the sender is another email, since the tracking links inside the unsubscribe and so on are Mautic's emails, uh, I mean, the, the blacklisted domains, fingerprint is in there, you would get also your new domain blacklisted. We experienced that many times. So don't try to do the domain hopping. When you go from one domain to the other, you will essentially taint your domains. And even if 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 you have the other way around, which means you have a, you, you use a blacklisted email and you're tracking your Mautic install domain is fine, they will just de uh, destroy each other anyway. So it's very similar to having a bad apple in a, in a, in a basket, they will taint each other. So you always have to hermetically seal these domains from each other. They have huge influence on inboxing and also on future blacklisting. Moreover, they also influence your tab placement. Uh, I can't tell you how many times it happened that someone was complaining that, yeah, but I'm sending from a new email, never had a, uh, this was working in another, uh, in another software. Why it's not working in Mautic? It's not working in Mautic because your Mautic domain was used to send promotional emails. And even your other sender email is clean and was used for transaction only and day-to-day -day contact, you will still end in the promotional folder. There are other reasons for that, of course, but in general, it's uh, it's one of, one, of, one of the problems what you can experience. And like I said, if you are using one domain where you installed your Mautic and you have multiple emails, still they will have, a, have an effect on each other. And even though you try to separate your marketing and transactional emails, which I urge you to do because you always want to land the, the, the customer support answers, the invoices, the the prize offers and so on, you always want to land in a mailbox, you have no ability to do that. And simply because your email content will be mixed. So let's have a look what I'm talking about exactly. So you have the Mautic domains. In this case, uh, I want to send from allmymautics.com, okay? So in my email, I will have the from address from hello at joykeller.com. Great. But everything else will point at my Mautic. Allmymautics.com, that's the list unsubscribe. Then I will have the images. Then I will have my links also overwritten by Mautic. And the image source will be also changed to the, to the hosting place. And this very last image here, this GIF or GIF, let's say GIF, <laughs> is, uh, is my tracking. And you can't avoid these things because you need to have all of these items in order to to do email marketing. So um, we, we, there, there is a, there are solution for all of this. Um, and uh, one of the, one of the solution, let's, let's go first look at the, the, uh, the do domain part, the website part, the tracking. So this is Mautic installed on my, on my blog. Um, like I said, if I want to have a shop as well, which I don't have, uh, but let's say I would have joyshop.com, then I could have a C name saying that joyshop.com is actually equals modicjoykeller.com and change my tracking based on this information. And my tracking would be fine. I would keep serving the first party cookies. I don't need to install another modic, but the cross tracking would work in this case. And that's, that looks just like this. You choose the C name, C name, amjoyshop.com is modicjoycolor.com. 
So this way you make these two equivalent in the eye of the visitor or the browser. Uh, just another example, you can do it multiple times. So you can say that Professor X is Patrick Stewart, but you can also say Jean-Luc Picard is Patrick Stewart. It's all the same. You can have as many C names you want and the, the, the browser will always know that that's actually your modic which you are referring to. Okay, so that's about the first first party tracking. Let's look a little bit, how is it working with emails? Uh, and this is actually what we worked on a little bit in the past couple of months. Uh, it's a very common request from our clients. So let's say I want to change these links because I don't want, I, I'm using multiple websites, I'm using marketing for multiple websites, but I just wanna have one more, what do I do? So what you can do here is you cannot change the list unsubscribe. Uh, you cannot do um, the pixel and you cannot do the href. You can do the image. So you can just uh, have the image as a link, uh, manually edit, uh, change to, in this case, joyshop.com and it would work. So we created a plugin for that. Uh, it's called the multi-domain plug plugin. And what it does, it changes the email domains and introduces the concept of tracking domain. And this is, this is not a new concept. Uh, it's very popular among email marketing software. And we, we thought that Mautic should also have it. And we hope that one day, if it's worthy, then should be part of the core. Right now, we just created it as a plugin to test and make sure that it works properly. Uh, Acquia has this feature, but it didn't go into uh, the uh, community version. They, they do it a little bit differently, and it can be very powerful too. So you don't want to give this access to your clients without the face check before, because it can do very powerful stuff. It's very simple, actually. All it does is uh, first you need to use the, the, the C naming convention. It's the same C naming convention which I used in the previous example. So in my case, I would say that my m.joyshop.com equals allmymautics.com. Allmymautics.com is where I installed my Mautic and that's where I'm trying to uh, send the emails from. Um, the plugin rewrites the email in such a way that it would change the list unsubscribe, so you would have no fingerprint of the original domain. It also changes the links and also changes the tracking image. And since you have a C name set up already, this is actually really cool because everything will just work. Um, at this point in this version, the image images are not rewritten, uh, but we we try to include it into the future, in the future. How to use it? You, you will have a new um, menu item um, and you would be able to add a new email address saying that hello at joydkeller.com will be my, my new email, what I would like to use. This is not something uh, this domain is not where my where this Mautic is installed on. And you would add the domain. You say, okay, so if I have an email being sent out from hello at joyshop.com, then please rewrite the domains as m.joyshop.com. So in that moment, you would have the same domain as the sender email automatically applied in case this email is uh, used. And this is this will be always rewritten. So you cannot just turn it on off uh, case by case basis. If you're using another sender email, not hellojoyshop.com, then it will be not uh, used. So for example, if you have, uh, this is just an example email we are sending out uh, from joyshop and it's hellojoyshop.com. Uh, the plugin re recognizes that, hello, I need, to, I need to rewrite this because I have it in here in the previous one. So it will, this rule will be always valid. So I have it here. So I'm gonna rewrite it. And it also works as use owner as a mailer, which is quite powerful. So that means if you have an ownership system, like a, a, a contact ownership system, where you have 10 different owners on 10 different domains, 
you are able to use the right domain in every case for your email marketing. And that's pretty cool because you're suddenly not sending from one domain, you're sending from multiple domains. Please do not misuse that because you will be eventually called, but if you use it in a, in a, in a, in a civilized way, then it will help your email marketing and also your inboxing. And it help you, it will help you to do better transactional emails and separate your marketing emails as well. How do you install it? So it's free to use for everyone. Like I said, you will take something home today. If this is interesting for you, you can go to our uh, the friendly uh, GitHub account and it's MIT license. Please contribute to it. We will keep maintaining and developing it. At this point, it's we tested it really well on uh, on uh, Maltic 3. We have not given it spin yet on Maltic 4, but we plan to continue to to develop it. And on this GitHub account, you will find also our future uh, plugin releases. All will be open source, of course. And we will also add this to the marketplace once it's ready to go. And I think I've done my presentation a lot faster than I hope. So there is a bunch of time in case you have questions. I am ready to answer anything you might have what I didn't clear up or whatever. Hi, Jay. Thanks so much for that. Yes, you're very welcome. All right, good. So um, let me ask you some few questions before we okay. go on. So um, the first question I'll be asking you is, um, does the multi-domain plugin verify the CNAME settings? Yeah, so um, the problem is that right now, no. So we did, uh, I would say, a quick and dirty solution here. In every other tool, it would work this way, that when you try to add this new domain, I'm gonna try to go back to that screen. So here, wait, here, yeah? We should have some kind of domain verification. If this is really resolving to the same modic, it should be done, but right now it doesn't work that way. So you can make mistakes with it. But again, this is just version one. And we believe that uh, this domain can, I mean, this, this plugin can, can be developed uh, different ways in the future. So we will add the CNAME verification for sure. And maybe uh, it would be anyway good to, to include something like that, including the DKIM verification, SPF verification into Modic as well. And if you're interested in what ideas we have, then tomorrow we will have a Tiger team talk about this, how we can change uh, the, the current email interface and include these kind of things that marketers make less mistakes and they can use the email marketing in a more, more meaningful way. All right. So not yet. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so let me ask you another question and um, it still has to do with the C name. So what could go wrong or what would happen if this, C name settings are wrong. So if you mess up the C name, then it will point to somewhere else. So you would send out an email where no images will work and no uh, links will work and no unsubscribe will work and it will be very bad for you. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't use it. I hope that once the verification is added, then it can be used by anyone right now, just use with caution, but it does the job and you just need to set it up once. So. Just test it out and it will be great. Um, I, I want to believe you um, You touched this when you, during your presentation, but let me ask you again, which is um, using different domains all the time will keep your representation safe always, will that? No, so it's not, a, it's not like a silver bullet for spammers. Uh, what, it, what it will do is, uh, it will not keep your reputation safe. You still have to uh, do a proper email marketing and don't misuse the, this option to, to be able to change your domains. Um, if you are sending, if, if you have multiple C names pointed at one site and those sites are also black, I mean domains, sorry. And those domains are also blacklisted. It does have certain effect on your future blacklisting as well. 
I'm not saying that you will be blacklisted immediately. Like for example, if you're sending out an email with a blacklisted domain inside, the, the fact that you blacklisted, it will affect the new domain as well. Here is not the case, but it, sooner or later you will be blacklisted here too. So you're not 100% protected or whatsoever. Okay, all right. Thank you so much about for that, Joey. So um, there is no further questions. So um, I, I would say that's all for now. So thanks so much for your time, and um, do appreciate your time today. All right. Thank Please you so much.